Hi, I'm Rob with Believe in the Run. And I am Thomas with Believe in the Run. And we're hitting the trails. Yeah, we are. We're back. yippee tie yay Is that what they say when they go out? I feel like it. All right. Today we're going to talk about some of the most exciting trail running shoes of 2023 coming out and kind of took some inventory from our trail team, saw what they're excited about, kept their ear to the ground. Yeah, we're gonna talk about some of the shoes that we're most excited about on the trails. And there's plenty of them coming this year. Now, this isn't inclusive of everything, but it covers, you know, kind of what we know about right now. Let's get into it. One of the more exciting things that we saw at the running event is the North Face Summit Vective Pro. Uh, North Face has seen them make an actually legit effort to get into the trail racing game. And well, they've been trying for years, so yeah, it's nice to see that they're finally like up in the game and getting it done. So they've had some good performances in the shoe. Our reviewers have actually been running in it for the last month, as well as I think prototypes of the of this shoe. So what this is, the Vective Pro, there's three, uh, three shoes in the Summit series, or Summit Vective series, but this is the top tier one, it's $220. It does have a carbon fiber plate, an integrated tongue, it has like kind of like these wings that come out to stabilize on the trails, which I think might have given some issues in the beginning, but I think they like, fix some of that in the production model. Essentially, it's just a really nice racing shoe. It has like those alpha fly type style laces keep you locked down over the foot. And Taylor, our trail reviewer, when he was reviewing it, running in it in the fall of the proto version, he said it might've taken trail shoe of the year last year yeah. when it came out last year. So that's exciting uh, for North Face, not just the Vective Pro, but the other Vective uh, shoes in the line as well. So keep an eye out for them. Let's move on. This might be the most exciting one because it's, and I think a lot of people in the trail game are talking about it. We're talking about the Speedland GS Tam. It looks like a giant orange juicy shoe. It looks like a delicious treat. It does. It sure. looks like, like, oh, it just looks like a creamsicle. It was designed in partnership with... With Dylan Bowman from Free Trail. So he's kind of one of the Speedland athletes and partners with them on a lot of stuff. And it's his signature model. TAM stands for Mount Tem... How do you say it? T I can't. Tem Tem yeah. Tem Tem yeah, exactly what Robbie just said. Yeah, I thought you do for no, super I'm California. I mean, yeah. What did you say? Mount Tamalpia or something? Tamalpias? Yeah, yeah, it's Tamalpias? Something like that. It's that something right? like that. It might be close. All right, out there in California. This shoe has a lot of those premium features that we've seen in the previous Speedland models. What was your favorite thing about the previous Speedland? I mean, I love the dual BOA dials. The fit. Yeah, the the fit of it, you just can turn tune it in perfectly, that lockdown. Yeah, I don't normally like a big toe box, and that one has a generous toe box, but with the mm -hmm. BOA system and the way that that fit, it just dialed in so nicely. Yeah, and it had the, has the BOA LI2 dials, which can go backwards or forwards, which is really, I think the, I think Ultra Mont Blanc BOA is the only other shoe that has that. What's awesome about this shoe is that it is that max stack shoe. So it comes in at 37 millimeters in the heel, 30 in the forefoot, but it does have a wide base. That's what I was gonna say. So it's more stabilized. It looks like a fat tire. Yeah. Like it looks like a giant, you know, slab <laughs> that keeps you on the feet. So. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the high stack with something that's that wide. Now it's still light though, isn't it? Ten point seven ounces, so yeah, it's not the, light light in, but the, in the trail, trail world. game. Yeah, so it's got plenty of Michelin light rubber on the bottom. Yep. So it's definitely going to be durable, going to last a, a while. The midsole is a the, there's a drop in midsole that's blended p backs and then the kind of carrier is full p backs So one difference between it and the SLPDX, the SLPDX comes with that Carbotex right. plate. This one, you can put it in. Yeah, but so it's optional in this shoe. I think it's $35 extra, but it is compatible with past versions of Speedland, so you can just take the plate out of those and put it in this one. But the nice thing about this shoe is that it is $295, which is, it sounds- <laughs> The nice thing, it's still a lot of money for some people, but it's considerably lower. It was, the the other Speedland versions were 375, so it does bring it down to that price point. And Even I know, if you buy the plate. I'm not gonna sit here and defend them, but $295, if you spend $275 on a race stage Alpha Fly, it's not that far out of the range. Speedland is a young company. They're not doing inventory like Nike does where they buy thousands and they can lower the price by having that, right. that, that price point. They're doing a smaller boutique style uh, release. So you're using premium quality pieces like the Michelin rubber, the BOA system. So it's a smaller buy, it's a boutique 
like manufacturing process. So weight, less waste. So that's somewhat green. And you're going to have those premium things like the BOA dials yeah. and the Michelin rubber. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's a small company producing smaller units. So it's going to cost more. And I think it's an exciting shoe. Uh, again, it's coming in March 2023. I think you can pre-order right now. Speedland does all their shoes in small runs, and then once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. So that's, uh, if you want to grab it, grab it. If them. you're a big fan of orange, this is your shot. New Balance, not known for their trail running game. At the show, I have to say, for me, because I've been less on the trails than in previous years, this was a shoe that the next one I think that you're gonna talk about was the one I was probably most excited about. Yeah, so, well there's two of them. Uh, there's the New Balance More Trail V3, which I don't even know, I don't even care if it's a good trail shoe, it just looks That's good. That's the one I got excited. <laughs> it looks good, but it also like has that cush that I love and had some pretty gnarly nugs. Yeah, and it's a 40 millimeter stack height in the heel, which is pretty insane for a trail shoe, but it does have uh, the, the foam on the bottom is a firmer density to create more stability. It does have that like cutout in the middle of the shoe that's kind of the what you've seen in the SC Trainer type thing. And this has Vibram, some pretty aggressive Vibram lugs on it, so it's gonna be- Some teeth. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So that comes out in April for $160. Throw some Gore-Tex in that. <sighs> yeah, for sure, man. And then the other one is actually the New Balance Super Comp Trail, which so bringing the Super Comp to the trails. They're taking our two favorite New Balance shoes and they're saying, let's throw them on the trails. Yeah, so this one is more of a, I guess, racing shoe for the trails. It does have a forked carbon fiber plate in it. It's more on the lightweight side. Basically what they said is they're bringing like road racing elements to the trail. It's weird because I don't see New Balance, like they, they never like push their trail shoes and then they just like put out shoes like this. They like, look killer. That seems pretty legit. You know, we've seen ultra runnings becoming this big thing now. Um, you know, UTMB is, the Ironman group bought them out and there's a lot of money moving towards ultra running and trail running. Yeah. And I think companies are finally starting to realize that like we need to get stuff moving here. So that's exciting to see the Super Comp Trail. That comes out in summer 2023 for $200. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, okay, I love the more V4 for super cush over here on the road. Let's put it on the trail. I love it there. Yeah. Same thing with the SE trainer. Now we can't forget this shoe because last year this shoe was mm, one of my favorite trail shoes, if not my favorite. And I think it was on a lot of our lists as well. I feel like it was also one of your favorite Hoka shoes <laughs> yeah, and maybe crossover shoe that you wore on the road. It might have been my favorite Hoka road shoe. Uh, and that's the Tecton X. Of course, this year is the Tecton X2. Um, so that's their carbon carbon fiber plated trail shoe. Now their carbon fiber plate's a little bit different. It's kind of like split into two parts. So it's like dual suspension is the way they like to say it. Now the good news is they made some changes to the upper, which was really the only issue I had with it. So before it was the heel lockdown wasn't perfect. There was a little bagginess and room in the forefoot. And so they basically refined all of that to make it, um, yeah, a better lockdown on the trail, so. It's funny to watch how Hoka's changed. Like it used to be everybody was all about the speed goat. Yeah. The Mafate, all that stuff. And it seems like the Tecton has really carved out a spot for itself. Everyone, pretty much everyone known has loved it. Um, and it's exciting to, yeah, see their trail segment, especially doing so well. And that is coming out in April for $225. Ouch. Which is pretty pricey, because I believe last year's version was only only $200. The Go cat ahead. is hitting the trails, Robbie. You're gonna tell me about it. They actually seem to be making a pretty concerted effort to kind of what New Balance is doing that we just talked about to move into the trail segment. And one of the shoes I'm excited about is the Puma Voyage Nitro 3. I didn't even know there was two other versions yeah. of it. Who went on the first two voyages? <laughs> <laughs> but this is a kind of a do-it-all trail shoe, not necessarily racing, not necessarily like long distance, kind of in between. Just a good trail shoe, full nitro midsole, stack height 35 millimeters, 27 in the forefoot. And it also has a Puma Grip ATR, so like they're all terrain. Which and they're moving hardcore into trail. I even think a certain female record holding US ultra runner so? is right. is possibly going That's there. Maybe our prediction. So yeah. we'll see how that works out. I mean, we love Puma Grip on the road shoes. So to have a more aggressive version of that, man, yeah, that's gonna it be It can nice. work out well. And that shoe comes July 2023 for $140. All right, lastly, 
on this on the trail side we have the brooks catamount what's weird is that brooks i feel like in the trail side has been doing okay the last couple of years still because the the caldera was pretty legit last year mm -hmm. that's the one that i wore for my 50k which really nice kind of cushion that, that was one of the shoes where they used the nitrogen infused foam like correctly <laughs> having the uh second version come out which is in february for 170 dollars we're very excited about that we saw it at tre it seems like they made some changes the first version had some issues with the upper apparently they kind of fixed that they now have the what they call an air mesh upper um and still a dna flash midsole that's the weird thing is I think the midsole has pretty much stayed the same. I have to say, and I haven't thought that a lot of the Brooks shoes look great. This one actually also looks pretty good. It does look really good. Um, it also has a Sky Vault propulsion plate. I'm sure it helps protect the feet a little bit, but yeah. there's not that pop off that maybe you, they are, they're, I think they're marketing as this like aggressive pop off the toe, which is non-existent. It is but. crazy. Like a couple of years ago, you never saw a plate in a trail right. shoe. Now there's like every company has a plate. Unless, trail it, shoe. unless it was like a rock plate, not yeah. like a performance plate. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, all to say it is only eight and a half ounces. So it's a nice kind of faster shoe on the trails. The traction is good. Better lockdown on the upper this year. It, and it does look really good. It's not a bad shoe at all. And again, that comes out in February for $170. I think that's it for the trails. Of course, there's so many trail shoes coming from other brands as well. I mean, there's Ultra, Merrill, who didn't even mention, Merrill's freaking puts out some of the best trail shoes that are just at a good price point. Yeah, we talked about Kraft a little bit in the Kraft. on the other side. Solomon, of course. Yeah, even yeah. Topo. Yeah, and Topo Athletic, always. Just comment on what you would like to hear more about. Because this is just a, hey, we're excited about this yeah. stuff, but we want to know what reviews we need to get pumping so yeah. that you can get those get those decisions made. And I think some of the stuff that we're most excited about is because the, a lot of these brands haven't put out great product in the yeah. trail space, so it's exciting to see them going into that. So it, Absolutely. Yeah. I think Adidas is a great example of that. New Balance. Yeah, yeah New Balance. Um, Puma. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and follow us on all our social channels. Yeah, tune into the drop weekly and every other week we've got Fuel for the Soul. Mm -hmm. So check those out wherever you listen to podcasts. Yep. All right. See you on the trails. Giddy up. Yeah.